Welcome to Journaling with Nature, the podcast for those who want to turn curiosity into wonder, a pencil sketch into a rabbit hole of discovery, a moment of stillness into a life full of joy. I'm your host, Bethan Burton. Let's open the pages of our nature journals and explore this world together. Hello, this is episode 170. I hope you're doing well. I was sick again with a cold last week. I seem to get every single cold that's going around. And actually, when I edited last week's podcast with Nix Johnson, I remembered that I'd had a cold during the recording of that one. You might have heard it in my voice, but I edited out all the coughing (laughs) and I'm here again. Thanks for your patience when I have to take a week off since our last Nature Journal prompt episode. I've been doing a month-long challenge, which is following the template of the art challenge called Inktober. You might have heard of Inktober. It's an art challenge that goes for the whole month of October, and you sketch every day using ink. And I've been sketching every day using ink, but I can't help myself. I have to add color. So I've been, I started off using my uh, Derwent Inktense pencils because I thought that was more authentic to the Inktober vibe, but... uh, I went back to my default, which is my beloved watercolors. I just can't do a sketch without watercolor. Anyway, uh, so I called my prompt list and the challenge that I created Inktober in the Garden because I'm really focusing my nature journaling specifically on the garden at the moment. But also folks who wanted to come along on, on this journey and join me in the challenge were invited to use the prompts for any part of their nearby nature if they don't have a garden. It's been really fun to sketch up to a prompt every day and to think about how I might interpret the prompt and seeing the string of pages growing when you do a challenge like this is really fun. Actually, this is the first time I've stuck this far to a challenge. I always start Inktober and I always lose momentum very soon into it. So I'm kind of proud of myself to have already gotten to day 20. Today is day 21. A few times I've been late to the prompt and posted the following day, but that's also okay. There are folks who have joined in on the challenge but are just doing the prompt that they felt like doing and leaving the rest, which is also amazing. I never want people to nature journal out of duty or for any other reason except because it feels good to connect with creativity and with the natural world. I think taking on these challenges can be fun. But we don't have to be perfectionistic and we can let them fit in around our lives. So that's been fun. So because I've got this challenge going all month long with daily prompts, I wasn't sure what to do for today's podcast Nature Journal prompt episode. And then I realized what it's going to be. So I'll tell you a little story before I tell you the prompt. Last week, I was having a Zoom catch up with a friend who also loves gardens and we were talking about When you go into the garden, almost every time there is a moment where you'll be inspecting things or spending time there, taking a little walk and looking about what's changed and you'll come across something that's newly flowering or newly fruiting or something that's changed in another way or there's an insect doing something amazing and it will be so beautiful or surprising that it will make you go like take in your breath in that way. It happens to me almost every day in the garden. And you take in this breath because of delight and surprise. And actually that reminds me of the trailer episode for this podcast where I mention things that make you gasp with delight. And it's such a beautiful feeling to have something so surprising that you involuntarily gasp. It's just the best. I wonder if this has happened to you. Right after I was talking to my friend on that day, I went outside to record a little video garden tour to send her. And actually, I had one of these moments when I was filming that little garden tour. I was filming this little section of my garden that's a patch of nasturtium flowers. And amongst the nasturtiums was this open poppy, bright red with these big floppy petals. And it was the first time I'd seen one growing and it was beautiful. I do remember planting the poppies in amongst a mix of flowers, but the nasturtiums had taken over the garden and I really didn't think any of the other flowers were going to survive. So to see this poppy standing up tall there, it was such a beautiful surprise and it made me it made me do that thing where you take in a breath because it's so beautiful and so surprising. 
So what I was thinking for today's Nature Journal prompt episode is to invite you to go outside with an openness and a readiness to be delighted by what you find there. See if you can look for moments that make you gasp with delight. Often this is because something is new. If you're really familiar with your nearby nature or your garden or even just a plant inside your home, when something changes like a new shoot appears or a bud or a flower, this can cause you that moment of delight. Another way to find these moments is just to look really closely, more closely than you normally would look. I remember when I was doing a workshop for International Nature Journaling Week one year, it was about mindful nature journaling, and I wanted to find examples of different parts of nature that we could experience with our different senses. And so I went outside for a walk, I had my camera, and I was just looking really closely at nature. And I was sitting by a local pond and looking really closely at the grass beside me, and suddenly I saw this big blue dragonfly, and it was right there, really close. I could see the details of its eye and its wings, and it was a moment of connection and so surprising. And I remember just feeling connected and especially that moment when you see something living that's right beside you that you hadn't noticed before, it really does make you take a big breath in. And the point is that these nature stories, these possibilities for connection and awareness are all around us all the time. And all we have to do is go out there with the openness to pay attention and look closely and be ready to be delighted. Another time when I had this gasp of delight recently was in my garden. I was looking at my dahlia plants, which I planted a few months ago and have been dug up twice by my chickens. They're so hardy and so robust, and yet I'm just so captivated by them and excited about the journey of growing dahlias for the first time. Anyway, I went out there and I saw a little bud getting ready to grow and this moment of realizing, oh, there's going to be a flower here really soon. It gave me that feeling of just utter surprise and delight. There's another kind of way that this surprise and delight can be there in your awareness. This week I was opening some Madagascar beans in the garden. I've got three or four vines and they're all getting ready to be picked. They're the kind of beans that you dry and cook not the sort of green beans that you eat. These are ones that you sort of dry and store. Anyway, I was opening the bean pods and I had a rhythm going. I was opening them, putting the shells to one side and the beans in a pile on the other side of me. And I opened one and there was something moving inside. And I was so surprised and shocked that I squealed and I tossed the bean across the bench. And then when I recovered, I took the bean up again and I opened it up. And inside was this really big, plump caterpillar eating one of the Madagascar beans inside the pod. And when I looked closely, I could see that there was a perfect little hole where it had entered into the bean shell. And... This is another kind of feeling of delight. It's kind of horrified <laughs> horrified surprise or something like that when something's alive that you hadn't expected to be so close to you, I guess. And I had a similar feeling in the garden recently when I saw something at the base of my corn plants in the veggie patch and it was big, this big blobby orange thing and it made me kind of horrified but also delighted at the same time. Nature can be like that. It can be utterly beautiful and majestic and it can also be like horrifyingly wonderful (laughs) at the same time. And the slime mold was kind of like wet cake mixture. It was really disturbing and wonderful at the same time. And this is another way that that feeling of surprise and delight like delightfully horrified, (laughs) delightfully horrified by nature. I wonder if you've felt that feeling too. So there's these different ways that we can experience surprise and delight in the natural world. And all it takes is to pay close attention and to go outdoors with an awareness or a readiness to be surprised and to be delighted and look for those little things, those little changes, those little things that make us take that sharp intake of breath from amazement because this world is there for us and it is infinitely amazing. 
I want to know what surprises and delights you in your nearby nature. So I invite you to head outside and get ready to be delighted and pay attention and see what you notice and then share it. I'd love to hear your stories and you can leave a comment below this episode on the Journaling with Nature website. I really would love to hear about it. Thanks so much for listening. See you next week. 